Welcome back to another edition of Higher Education Today. I'm your host, Stephen Roy Goodman. I'm here in Azerbaijan, where I'm at ADA University in Baku, and we're going to be speaking about information technology. I'm here with Araz Yusubov, who is the Dean of Information Technology here at ADA University. I'm here also with Natavan Akundeva, who was an alum here, uh, and Miradel Zayedleli, who uh, was also an alum here. So welcome to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks for coming on the show. Araz, maybe if we could start with you. Um, what is information technology, and why is it so important in our lives? We know that technology has been growing and growing and growing, but how does it really affect our lives, and what sorts of things are you teaching here at the university to make sure that it's integrated into our lives? Uh, thank you for having us, Stephen. Uh, information technology, I think if to start from the end, nobody now denies, nobody now denies that actually IT, information technology, has changed our life in very different aspects of our life, starting from education, ending with entertainment. So it's everywhere. But then when we talk about information technologies, we understand that this actually started with a revolution, uh, basically introduction of computing machines or thinking machines. Uh, and then this all goes back to the basics, which is computer science. And this is one of the uh, majors we are actually teaching at this university. So we have three majors. All of them are related to information technology, but then they are uh, somehow a bit different. So computer science, computer engineering, and then we have specifically information technology as a major bachelor, uh, bachelor of science degrees here. Fair enough. And what did you study when you were here? Um, here I studied information technologies and system engineering, uh, and I graduated in 2018. And what are you doing now? Um, now I uh, hold the position of machine learning engineer at ATL Tech Company. And we are currently working on speech recognition tasks in Azerbaijani language. Hmm. And you're working in the field as well, I assume? Uh, yes, I graduated, graduated in 2019 uh, with a Bachelor of Computer Engineering. Uh, and I'm currently working in Smux Technologies as uh, Embedded Software Engineer. And we're most, mostly um, doing projects with IoT and other embedded products. And what sorts of projects, if you're uh, um, able to say that? We have projects like um, car GPS tracking. We have projects like um, air quality. Uh, we measure like the quality of the air, the gases, um, and other things, uh, temperature, humidity, etc. And we have other projects look like, um, I think these are the most main parts of our thing. And we also, sorry for interruption, we also have smart house. Uh, we also do projects for smart house where you can um, control your home devices f with the phone far away. So these are the mostly the main um, areas of our work. So if, if you look at what they, they are doing, actually, you can, you can feel the difference of the different majors. So uh, Miradil, in fact, he graduated from computer engineering, and they are, they are kind of uh, rather focusing on hardware part of the information technologies more than the others. Uh, but then if you look at the computer science, it's more about software part of the information technologies, if to simplify everything. And when, when we talk about IT, IT is rather about if you uh, want to actually build up infrastructure on an organizational level, so they learn different stuff like uh, IT project management, or they understand business process modeling rather than computer science, which is focusing more into the mathematical background of the computer science, and then they understand more uh, such things like, okay, software engineering, and then artificial intelligence, machine learning, so this stuff. Well, you mentioned artificial intelligence. Um, that is obviously in the news all the time. So yes. what is the concern about artificial intelligence? Why are people so concerned about it? Um, the greatest point about artificial intelligence is that it just does tasks, performs tasks better and faster and with less error. That's why people try to teach machines of the tasks that we perform day by day. And it's like, let's say, they are routine work, and nowadays machines can uh, do these things faster and better than us. And that's why, uh, like we, for example, we mostly work with speech, with call centers, and that's why we want to optimize the process so that uh, the agents, call center agents, will not waste much time on recognizing some, like, let's say, taking some meaning of the uh, speech of the call and writing it down, but instead it will do, the machine will do all this stuff. 
automatically. Yeah, and then you can see actually what are the tasks. So basically some, some decades ago, we would say some ima unimaginable things. So this would be like, oh, machine recognizing a person, this is impossible. But then now many, many things which previously were thought that they are nearly impossible, they're becoming possible. Yeah. And that's kind of concerns people possibly, I, I guess. Yes. Yeah, and it's not about only just recognizing speech. Machines nowadays can also recognize visual things like objects, images, and they also can recognize patterns. So this and they, is there was an article that actually Facebook recognized if you will break up before you realize that. <laughs> yeah. Months, months before people realize that they're going to break up. Actually, Facebook algorithms can understand that people are going to break up. So that are interesting things. Mm -hmm. And the possibility this, this scares people. Yeah. <laughs> It is scary, I would say. <laughs> well, I, I guess in the United States, we have a concern about self-automated cars. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if that's a big issue here in Azerbaijan. But there's, on one hand, people are very excited about having self-driving vehicles. On the other hand, people are concerned about what it's going to do to the whole sector, about what happens when all the truck drivers go, you know, aren't needed anymore. Is that an mm -hmm. issue here? Um, well, um, so the, there is a concern, as you said, um, that people think that artificial intelligence and machine learning will steal the jobs of the people. Like, I don't know, drivers or other things like speech recognition, we don't need call center people or help desk people. But in the meantime, as it is stealing jobs, because it is, uh, the new fields are created because like, um, before, we didn't have machine learning engineer as a software writer. We had mathematicians who did the, all the job. Uh, so um, the professions are getting more and more professional. So although we are losing people, uh, we, are, we are increasing the number of people who are losing jobs. In the meantime, we're increasing the places that people can work, but in the different uh, region, different area of uh, machine learning or... Uh, yeah, that, that's one of the hopes, in fact. Uh, and, and in fact, it's not about Azerbaijan or US, it's a global issue. And then there are many discussions and some people are very pessimistic, some people are optimistic about new jobs opening. When the, but then the humanity went through several stages like that. I mean, do you, do you see horse drivers around? I, have, I bet a century ago it, it was kind of an important job or like... Uh, last century, like several decades ago, we had a movie in Azerbaijan which was called Elevator Girl because they were elevator operators or tele telephone operator was, was a job which, which people were working. But then they are no more because now we have automated tel telephone stations mm -hmm. uh, and the more is coming. Uh, so the reaction of people are different. You know the word sabotage. Do you know the meaning of that? It comes from the sabo the actually shoe. So when the first industrial revolution was happening, people were actually putting their shoes into the machines so this, to destroy them because they were afraid that this will actually steal, these machines will steal their job. This will happen. I think this is inevitable, uh, but then hopefully, as Miradin said, there will be new jobs. Uh, and then, did you, did you hear about SMM uh, as a job uh, a decade ago? Social media manager, that was, not, there was no job like that. Oh, many others like uh, embedded systems engineer, uh, machine, part, part of machine yeah. learning engineer. Um, so uh, the hope that there will be new jobs created. Well, I think those are all really interesting points, but I guess I wanted to get to, if I could, the question of how quickly we switch. And I, I take your point about there are no uh, horse, there aren't a lot of people driving, you know, around with, in horses in cities around the world right now. But there's a fear. There may be a difference between a fear and what's actually going to happen. So maybe if you could talk, maybe if all three of you could talk a little bit about some of the ways that you're kind of slowly, in, in, in an incremental way, helping the public to come along with you. Okay. Uh, I, I think basically many change happening that the information technology is in the center of all this change happening. And then there is a joke that the only thing which doesn't change in IT is that it changes every day. So yeah, even in education, like what, whatever you learn now might not be uh, relevant in, in, I don't know, five, six years. So yes, there is a kind of concern how we cope with that. Mm, I think that basically 
the, the important thing is that uh, there are so certain skills which are actually needed in this new world. Uh, and then there is a thinking. So I, I will go back a, a bit to philosophy of that stuff. Maybe, maybe students will add more practical things. Uh, so industrial revolution, uh, the, the, there was a new thinking coming, and this was scientific thinking. So this made in industrial revolution possible. And then you ask, like, did you ever wonder, like, did, 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 did you learn chemistry in your school, or biology, or physics, Steve? Yes, of course. Why did you do that? Did you did you wonder why do you why did you learn that? And then if if you look back, possibly your grandpa never learned that in in their schools, or your father. Uh, possibly he started to learn that. So this all was actually a result. So to actually have people who would have this thinking, scientific thinking, you had to actually teach it in the schools. And then as a result, you would have number of engineers you would have to have. So th and the new thinking is coming, and it's already here. And then people, people uh, or they call it computational thinking. And then the main premises of that is like, the main premise of the scientific thinking was you can explain everything. And the main thinking of computational thinking is you can actually compute everything or automate everything. So this is the main premise. And then what you need to know to be able to do that, apart from chemistry, science, math, etc. Math is important, everybody agrees. But then the, 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 you need to have algorithmic thinking. And then the, 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 possibly like many people heard this algorithm, the word. And then the skill related to that is coding or programming. So basically, this is the skill which is needed actually in, in this new world. And then no matter uh, if you are a specialist in the area or not, possibly on some point, you maybe even yourself actually coded or programmed some uh, machine to do the job for you. Uh, and then these this are different levels. And then speaking of algorithms, basically the, the main problem is that many people, I believe, they kind of, there is a need to demystify uh, algorithmic thinking and computer science and then programming as a skill. It's not hard. Uh, in US, for example, a couple of years ago, they started this code org as a global campaign to demystify the coding. And then there were many main, like, important people like uh, Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg, they, they were kind of supporting supporting that, uh, that campaign, and then everybody understands the importance of learning the skills as early as possible, and then we've been supporting that campaign here in Azerbaijan too. Fair enough, what do you guys think? Um, I will add like a couple of things. Um, as I was a student, uh, like preparing for the university, uh, I always knew that like many of the students in Azerbaijan are trying to get to oil and gas industry. Uh, because it's like one of the most developed uh, industries in, in this country, uh, which is understandable. But nowadays I see many and many people trying to learn IT and to go to the field of IT, uh, which is like, it's, it is some improvement. Uh, so I think we already have progress there, even if it's small, but it's, it is a progress. Uh, moreover, like um, about the industry, like in, in the embedded, so like the, in the field that we are working, embedded uh, and hardware, the, in this country there, are, there, is a little, uh, there is little market. Like nobody knows what is it and what they can do with that. Uh, it was like that like, like five, six years ago, but nowadays we get more and more projects, we have more rivals and we see that people are getting interested in it. And, um, People are showing interest in it, and they are trying to learn new things. They are trying new things, doing new projects. They are uh, asking for opinions, and etc. I think that's quite of progress. And um, as you said, like, are we ready for that? Are we going fast enough? Uh, I think not fast, but gradually we'll be, we'll be ready for anything. What I believe is that um, this change of jobs will not happen rapidly, but rather gradually. So most of the peop working people now will not lose their jobs. This change will happen in near future, and this will affect youngsters. And I think that youngsters nowadays are way more, way more uh, into that technologies. They know more than us in, when it comes to technological devices. So I think if they're prepared from the schools, 
to this world of IT, there will not be any threat of losing jobs or um, being unemployed. Well, that's an, that's an interesting point about the schools. So in your opinion, what should schools be doing before the university level? And we'll, we'll talk about the university in a second, but what do you think schools should be doing? Um, f uh, in my personal opinion, they, there should be some classes that will teach, that will make them prepare, that will prepare them to the IT world. For example, they could be um, algorithmic thinking. So the way how you can solve the problems, um, you will like basically know the steps. You will learn how to develop an algorithm. As a like um, support to Natavan's words, like we need algorithmic thinking in schools. Why? Because most of the people who are not interested or not relevant to IT think that the IT and computer science is more about coding, but it is not actually. It's more about thinking and um, finding a way to solve. Uh, so if we are taught, if we were taught in school like algorithmic thinking, we it would have been really easier for us to learn programming uh, and other pro languages and uh, algorithms, data structures. Uh, I think so. I think like algorithmic thinking is the main point in schools. Um, moreover, um, in IT, the mass, as Aras Bay said, uh, mass is very important. So I think. Uh, we have mass in school, okay, but I would say uh, to rising the level of mass for the last classes would be good for preparing ch children to university. Um, these two are, I would say, in my opinion, the main things for enrolling the university. Well, that is interesting. Could you give us an example of the algorithmic thinking that you're thinking about right now that you think that we ought to push a little bit more. Okay, one of the like uh, the famous algorithms in, uh, in algorithm thinking are divide and conquer. So you have a task, you think, okay, I'm not doing this. I'm doing level by level. I'm, I'm gonna first do this, I'm gonna research, I'm gonna then find the, the questions, I'm gonna find which problems did people struggle with, uh, I'll find if they have a solution already, and then you build up, you build up, you build up, and then you, uh, like, 10 minutes of planning um, kind of saves you one hour, one hour of work. So it's mainly that thing. You are thinking, thinking, planning, and then you do the task in a short time. That's the main thing I would say. That's I'm using right now. Application is kind of generally you can apply it everywhere. Like they compose the problem, you know, and then think about the steps, etc. But then obviously, like when you, the, the the main thing is there is, uh, I think the, the machines we have now they are called computers, and this is historical reason. Historical reason for that is initially they were helping to compute something, basically do some mathematical calculations. But then it is amazing that people understood earlier enough that you can actually put mathematical model of everything literally around. Relationship between the people, facial kind of features, uh, you know, images are now can be modeled like mathematically. So once you can do that, you can actually automate everything. So that's, that's the, but then to be able to automate, you need to build first the mathematical model of that and then think of within this mathematical model how you achieve the goal, okay? Simple thing like going from one point to another point, uh, you need to have information about what are the different ways to go and then you, you then can look at the shortest path, which is now happening in our GPSs and then some people are actually say that they're stupid, they don't give you the optimum solution, but then if factually, they are giving the optimum solution. Why? Because there is a model, mathematical model, which can describe the roads between two points, and then it can actually look at the different parameters, how to optimize that. Obviously, the shortest path might not be the best in terms of the time. So your navigator actually looks at different things, how congested are the roads, how much time it will take, etc. So this is a simple example of how it is done. And uh, basically the, the algorithms we are looking at, there are some classical algorithms, we teach them here. The important thing is that on some point, uh, you know, that the beauty of actually any science is like you learn uh, what is the box, and I joke always about that. In university we teach, teach you what is, what is the box, so you would be able to think out of the box on some point. So that's, that's what we do here. I think the most important thing is uh, the skill to learn, self-learn, self-teach, 
and then relearn stuff. I think that will be needed. And then the, the, the basis of that is critical thinking and creative thinking. And I don't know any other uh, field or skill as programming which, is, which talks to that skill. Because programming is about uh, creative, creativity. Yeah? Pro programming is about critical thinking. Programming is about understanding how we think, basically. So that, that's, a, that's a beautiful thing, and I would advise everybody, you too, if, if you didn't do so yet, uh, to, try to, to, to try to program a little bit. There are many resources now around, so you can, you can learn too. One more point to add, like, it will be really important for people, for students that, uh, to understand what's behind the meaning of IT. For most of the people, it's just black box. And they really don't know that they have, th this word IT has different areas. It, as we said, it can be software, like programming, web programming, software developing, machine learning, AI, or it can be hardware, like network servers, embedded systems. So uh, is, if we talk about schools, then it will be really great to really give them basic understanding what is IT, and if it's interesting for them, what kind of uh, job opportunities do they, like what's interesting to them. So further they, in the career path, they will choose that path. In my uh, experience, I basically choose computer engineering on a hunch, basically, because I really didn't know what to choose, computer science, exactly. computer engineering, and IT. We, what is the difference? I didn't know that. But uh, luckily, it turned out good. So I, I love computer engineering, so, and I'm working in that field. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, I, I would add one thing that generally the general population, and I, I kind of support what Natawan said, we should be informed about what's the IT, because the immerse uh, effect on our lives. Uh, everybody should understand the basics of what is happening in these boxes, in this, yes, in this, in this uh, black box, which many people think, think about IT like that, like this box, something happening inside. And I would say that even, even more so, like maybe politicians should also know more than uh, they know now, <laughs> you know, looking at the evidences, because uh, the, the IT is changing the life of people and affected in a way uh, never before hap happened in, in the history of humanity. So everybody should understand the, how, how this is working, I think. Well, you've all helped us to understand how it is working a bit more than we did at the beginning of the show. So thank you all very much for taking the time to come uh, to the show today. Thank you for, thank you for inviting us. Well, thank you. We're continuing our discussion about creative thinking and information technology at ADA University, and I'm here with Sabina Amirovov. Welcome. Nice to meet you. Thank you for inviting me. Well, thank you for coming on. As you just heard your colleagues talk about the importance of creative thinking in information technology, wh why do you think that's so important? Uh, yes, uh, critical and analytical thinking uh, we think that is very important for our students. In this regard, we recently signed an agreement with George Washington University. Uh, this program will offer to our students uh, to have uh, the master, uh, to get the master degree on uh, computer science and data analytics. Uh, this collaboration and this program are fully funded by the state uh, government uh, within the framework of state program on increasing the international competitive of uh, higher education system in Azerbaijan. So this uh, program will be covered, uh, will cover the tu tuition fee, uh, living costs, and the other expenses of the students living there. And they will have the chance uh, to visit the George Washington University and study there for two semesters. Overall, the program will cover, will be the, for the five semesters. Three of them will be in Baku, and two of them will be in uh, Washington, D.C. And uh, it is a very good chance for them to have the access for the labs, for the their innovation centers and to bring their this, uh, USA's um, experience to Azerbaijan. Do you see the students taking some of the uh, some of this some of the stuff from this program and applying it in the marketplace? For, so, for instance, what jobs do you think students might get afterwards? Uh, there is a huge demand uh, in Azerbaijan for IT engineers, IT specialists uh, in this sphere. So we think that this program will benefit for our uh, for our country. So. Uh, um, it will increase the human uh, just resources of in this sphere in other, in our country and our economy, our companies, like uh, the agencies, organizations will benefit from this. And I guess my follow my follow up question to that, because I think we're going to have to say goodbye after this, is 
what about the startups? How do you see this affecting some of the startups that are here in Azerbaijan? Startup sector uh, is right now is booming in Azerbaijan. Uh, we have very young people, uh, like in our university students, also who has very bright ideas, bright projects uh, on this uh, regard. So they want to just collaborate with companies uh, to work with them. So uh, startup uh, sector is developing in Azerbaijan, and we have at the University uh, Innovation Center, uh, and every year, uh, each year, we just uh, uh, holding different uh, competitions among the students to boost the startups, just thinking in uh, startup projects in EDA University. Well, that's very helpful and that's very interesting. So thank you very much. Um, and thank you to our viewers for watching another segment of uh, Higher Education Today. If you would like additional information about ADA University, please visit ada.edu.az. If you would like to send a comment to me at the show, please go ahead and do so at Higher Education Today at topcolleges.com. And thank you again for watching. We will continue to bring you quality discussions about important matters in today's college and university world. I'm Stephen Roy Goodman, and you've been watching Higher Education Today.